hey guys thanks for watching doing a little late night editing and ran across some footage that i forgot to include now you guys know i love native american artifacts and finding anything related to them well this has become one of my favorite things to do now, i don't get a chance to do it often because you need private land you need permission and you need the law uh, to be on your side while you do this, and that is digging. And all three of those lined up for me. And when I dig, man, one of the things that I love to find is a fire pit, an intact fire pit. The thought's always in my mind while I'm out there artifact hunting in plowed fields that, you know, the Native Americans, they, they were here. But a fire pit, they were here, here fire pit is that hub of activity so much time spent around that cooking working tools just getting warm it just it's got a feel all its own so red and i get out and do a little digging and guys we have uncovered another fire pit check this out all right guys so here we are red came over close to this old fence line here and uh was shoveling around and encountered quite a bit of rock down in here and so he just kind of stopped as quick as he noticed it so what we're seeing i'm gonna see if you can see the the reddish color a lot of that is fire rock fire cracked rock and uh there's a good piece of it so started digging down and what we have is just a line of rock. Now, a lot of that's still buried under some mud there. I can feel it. You just can't see it. I'll uncover it. But right down here in the bottom, you see that streak of uh, dark color material right in the center of the yellow? It's like, the, uh, it's like they, they lined this pit maybe with some clay, fresh clay. Below that, there should be a color change all the way around. Um, it just shows different, it shows that dirt was being moved around in here. Usually when you hit that color, you don't hit another color change beneath it for a long, long distance. But this is just a thin layer of it with darker stuff beneath it. So that's called a little bit of a feature. And it's probably just because I've scratched in that one area. It probably extends all along this fire pit, but we'll clean it out a little bit more and see if we can get some definition. I think at least half of it's there. All right, now we're starting to see a little bit of something. So I don't know if you can tell the rocks kind of laid in there. And right down in here, we're starting to hit charcoal. Over here, they got a nice polished river rock. And you can see some charcoal smearing off on that. So not a lot of charcoal now. We get down a little bit lower it may be in there a little thicker but for right now not not as much as what we've seen in other fire pits but it is showing up and there's rock lined all inside there we'll keep cleaning it out all right so red's excavating the back side of this what we think is the wall and you know the outside perimeter of a fire pit's a real good Handy place to look for artifacts. So what do you got there, Ed? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Here, stick it in my fingers. I'm gonna have to look at it up close. So this is heat-treated chert, or at least chert that got fell that fell in a fire. It's got the outside cortex on it. But we'll wash that up and give you a little better look, but. Got that darker color of uh, heat treated shirt. And where did that come out at? Uh, yeah. yeah, so there's the base of the fire pit, just up about six or eight in inches. And you gotta remember, a fire pit is sunk. They would have dug a hole out and lined it with rock. They didn't just stack rock on the surface of the ground and build a ring, kind of like we build a campfire ring. This would have been dug into the to the earth and uh, lined with rock. So to find artifacts at a higher level than the bottom of the fire pit is normal. Um, 
And so that came out at just the right level. All right, that's the first, well, significant artifact to come out. All right, so there's the fire pit and it's not a very even line, but there's rock all over the bottom of that, including that corner there. What we did is went on the other side and dug. Kind of wanted you to see the, the shape of that wall. And see that there's no rock on this other side. So I guess somebody could question, how do you know you're not just digging in real rocky ground? Well, when you start digging over here, and that is actually slightly deeper than this fire pit. And so no rock over in here this lined with rock and then we have a raised wall running right through this area and of course you can see there's rock that goes back in here there's one right there poking out we keep digging that on around there's going to be another wall on this side underneath that dirt i don't know that we're going to do that i don't think it was used a whole lot there's definitely not a lot of charcoal coming out of that one but there is enough to be pretty sure what we got there. And a couple little pieces of uh, chert too. You might wonder why they lined the fire pits with all this rock. That seems like a lot of work. You know, if we wanted a campfire, we're gonna cook on. We're just gonna make a ring of these rocks and lay a grate over the top of it and cook over the fire. Well, the rocks, actually were an oven so they had to line these things with the rock burn a fire in it the rocks would heat up and then you'd lay some sort of a wrapped meat down in there cover it and those heated rocks is what actually provided the heat to cook the food with and so that's why they took the time and effort to gather all these rocks and line a fire pit there's good indication of fire cracking right there here's a really good look at the color change in the soil that we encounter when we excavate near fire pits you're going to see three distinct layers you got a lighter brown upper layer that's about 16 inches thick below that you got about a three inch layer of dark stained earth and below that a lighter clay layer that just goes on down it's that darker layer in the middle that I want to talk about. I call that the habitation layer. You probably won't find that in a textbook, I don't think. It's what I call it because I believe that's what happens when people inhabited this site. They did things that, came, that changed the color of the soil. Things were added to the soil. Now we are excavating near a fire pit, so a lot of activity took place right here. Things were added to the soil like blood and oils and fats and trampled plant matter and, of course, ash and charcoal from the fire. All that combined, and you have that dark staining. Now, you may ask, why is that stain down there at 16 inches and there's not a lot above that? Didn't Native Americans inhabit this land right up until European contact and even in the early 1800s with the removal of the Native Americans? Well... It speaks to the time that Native Americans were hunter-gatherers, and that meant they traveled in small bands. They did so to gather food as things, you know, bloomed and became ready for harvest. So small groups of people moving to various sites, and this went on for thousands of years, and it impacted the soil. Well, over time, the Native Americans changed and became more agrarian, meaning they grew their food in gardens and the need to travel in small groups and stay for extended periods of time in various locations changed and they began to occupy large villages. So this is just a little time capsule showing the last time this site was inhabited.